I'm your host, Rob Carbone. This is BD4. So it was what? Tampa, Miami, Baltimore, Seattle, Kansas City, and now Chicago. That's six. Yeah, okay, good. Thank God. Because I have I have six in the title. That's six consecutive series wins for the Yankees. Not too bad. That's what you want to do. They say that winning is good and losing is bad. That's just uh, an old adage that I've heard. Um, welcome to the podcast, everybody. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. BD4, episode 274. Um, yeah, man. If you haven't yet and you're new here, stop by. Um, if you have if you have not yet, it's been a long freaking weekend. And, um, and if you are new here and have just stopped by. There we go. You can <laughs> you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Anchor, which is our sponsor, and many other platforms to listen to this show on. You can also watch the podcast on YouTube, where the video feed is. Um, got through that. Uh, we do Yankees episodes every series. And we do Knicks episodes every two games when they are in season. The Knicks Summer League, I think, is concluding tomorrow night against Atlanta. Don't care. Um, and um, if you haven't yet followed me on social media, you know where to find me. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can also subscribe to my blog. It's my opinion where I write Yankees and Knicks recaps every game. This season, I've been a little slow with the Yankees, doing more series recaps, and I've taken a break lately, but we'll be back with that soon. Um, all that information, the blog, the podcast, my social, just find that on my link tree, linktr.ee forward slash RJ Carbone. But welcome to the show. Welcome to 274 of BD4. Um, yes, the Yankees keep winning. I'm um, going to try to keep this one short. I know I say that sometimes and I end up going longer. But we haven't done many like full hour episodes in a while, to be honest with you. Just because I've been so tired and so overworked with school. I've got finals coming up um, this, this upcoming week. That's for the summer semester. And then I go back in the fall trying to finish out. Um, and then I've been just, dude, it's, have you ever had your kitchen redone? That shit's bugging the shit out of me. Just because I, I, when you literally, especially in an Italian household, it affects your mood. Not being able to eat, like we don't have a, we don't have a stove. We don't have a refrigerator. Like we have, we have little small fridge and then we just bought a toaster oven because we can't just oh my god dude and it's supposed to be done already but the order that we put in for for the cabinets and the counters and the, and the island that we're getting whatever it's delayed until friggin i think like after september so we gotta go another month and a half at the least like this and it's been like this since the beginning of july or, or mid, maybe the middle of July. Fortunately, we, I was on vacation for two weeks, so we didn't have to deal with that. But now I'm back home, and it is hell not having a legitimate kitchen set up. And that's just affected my mood, which has affected my motivation to not do podcasts for long and take notes like I usually do. It's, it's what do they call it, hangry, because I'm hungry all the time now, and I don't have the usual foods to eat. It's a good way to lose weight and get in shape. Um, anyways... Uh, back to the show. Welcome to the podcast, episode 274 BD4. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. We're going to head to break. When we get back, we might as well get things started. All right, so stay with us, and um, we'll be right there. You are listening to RJ Carbone on BD4. If you haven't yet subscribed to this podcast, you can do that right now. BD4 is available on iTunes, Spotify, 
Google Podcasts, Anchor, and you can also watch it on YouTube. There are plenty of other platforms to find this podcast. All you have to do is go to linktr.ee forward slash RJ Carbone. And that will take you to where you need to be. Linktr.ee forward slash RJ Carbone in order to subscribe to this podcast. Also, we talked about the Field of Dreams game after the actual Field of Dreams game. So this is kind of like a two-episode series we had. So in episode 273, we just covered that whole entire Field of Dreams game. So if you want to go check out the recap and the breakdown of, of that game, um, go check that out in episode 273. Still stumbling over my words. Um, we also talked some UFC in that episode. So it was a good one. Go check that out if you haven't yet. And if you have, thank you for checking that out. Um, but... Yeah, man, the UFC is going to, like I said, uh, I said it last episode, I've been saying it for a bit. It's it's about to get really, really exciting these next couple of months. And in even even maybe, you know, all depending on where certain fights are scheduled entering the new year, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be sparking. Um, but, you know, one thing I forgot to mention in, these, in, the, in the last episode when we were talking about the upcoming events is we still have to see where this Dustin versus Charles Oliveira fight is scheduled. That could be on one of these cards coming up. Is um Nate Diaz gonna gonna be coming back soon? There's a lot of talk. He might want another fight. Um, you know, I think him and Connor would be good to fight each other, but obviously Connor's still working his way back from that leg injury a couple of uh, pay-per-views ago against Dustin. But um, I've heard a lot about Jorge Masvidal. You know, he's obviously gonna take a step back now with that loss most recently to Usman. Um, now 0 and 2 against against Kamaru. Does Jorge get Leon Edwards? Does he get Gilbert Burns? I mean, that's not too far of a of a step back. You know, those are contenders for the belt too. So maybe he gets one of them. That's been in a conversation. Um, and then, like I said, what I've been reading about is is how well, it was weird because after the fight where Cyril gone defeated Derek Lewis. He said, I was watching his interview, and he was saying how he's not really in a rush to get back out there. But I saw a headline. I didn't read the article. I'm lazy. I didn't actually click on it, so don't you know take this with a grain of salt, I guess. But I saw a headline that says, it said um, that Cyril Gaon wants the Francis fight to happen before 2021 ends. So maybe it was a change in uh, decision there. But I, again, I didn't read the article. You know, they could be a little tricky sometimes for clicks. But we'll see where that ends up. Uh, regardless, though, like I said, it's going to be an interesting next couple of months for the UFC. Uh, next several months, even. And so I'm excited for that. Giants football started up yesterday, the preseason. Obviously, against the Jets, they took a loss. Um, you know, I'm not a big NFL fan, not a big football fan. Um, I do watch it. But just because I've always watched it since I was a kid, honestly. But if you're into that, that's going to be interesting. I'm, a, I'm more of a college football guy than I am NFL, but I am a Giants fan. Um, so we'll see what happens with the season there. But the Yankees took two out of three to Chicago. Game three was today. This game was on Pix 11, and I was watching the pregame on Pix 11. They had Jim Leeritz on, which was pretty cool. And they were talking about, obviously, his big Game 4 uh, three-run blast to tie the game in the 96 World Series. That was pretty interesting. I was, I was listening to him talk about his thoughts on this current Yankees team. And he was saying how, you know, he loves the team post-deadline. How there's kind of a new energy. And, you know, we've obviously added some left-handed bats like Rizzo, Gallo, Odor's finally come around. So, it was nice to see Jim Leard's get some time. He, that would be good to see him on Yes Network. Yes needs to get more guys on. I know they have Buck Showalter from time to time, but dude, they had Wells on, and Wells is an old school guy who tells it how it is. He hasn't been back on since, and I think it's for exactly that. 
you know, he criticized Gary Sanchez, and you know you can't do that with yes. They're going to give you the boot. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool seeing him on there. Um, in other news, I guess yesterday I found out that Luis Severino had a setback again, again, again. Um, so not that I was ever expecting him to come back this season. I knew it would go down like this, and it exactly is going down like this. But in other news, uh, I guess the positives are that Kluber is still working his way back. No setbacks uh, yet. Garrett Cole is back tomorrow night. Uh, in that, in that, um, we got like a one-game makeup against the LA Angels at the stadium. So he'll be on the mound. Monty is obviously going to be back this week too. So they're both off the Corona list. Um, Herman, I hear, is close. Clark Schmidt. I hear is working his way back with Somerset. So when that all happens, man, and you look at it today, another brilliant gem by Nestor Cortez. Meanwhile, we have got this guy, Andrew Heaney. I think we know who gets the boot when the rotation is getting fully healthy here. I think you got to go Cortez over Heaney. I don't think you could throw Heaney out there anymore, especially how late it is in the season and, and given that we're still trying to push for a playoff spot. You can't have this guy going out there throwing more BP. And what Cortez shows you today, what he showed you today, and what he's been showing you, we're going to get to all that in a second, but I, I just think he deserves that spot. DJ, you know, it's funny because I was texting my buddy pregame or, or during the game, and he was going to me how DJ has been hot lately. We were talking about that and how his, his average, he says DJ's average is creeping up. He's about to pass Tyler Wade, he said. And I just, I took a second. I'm like, that is the funniest shit in the world. Because if you told me that last year, that we would be waiting for DJ the to, to surpass Tyler Wade in batting average, I would have slapped you in the face. Because, you know, I knew, I would have knew you were lying. But Wade did pick up an 0 for 5 today. DJ keeps hitting. And he's finally in the mid-270s, I believe now. Which is, you know, considering he was spending most of the year in the low 260s. He's gotten, he's gotten some hits lately. He's, he's turning it around. So we're all playing well. Everybody's playing well right now. The Yankees take two out of three. An impressive win considering they threw out guys like Lynn Giolito. We're out here throwing guys like Cortez and Heaney in this series. And we're still taking two of three. Um, we could have won that first game too, obviously. <clears throat> but the first game, we did lose eight to nine. Or nine to eight. Um, go check that out. Go check out the episode 273 recap if you want. Where we discussed that game more in depth. Obviously, the big talk of that of that game was was you know outside of the field of dream shit was the uh, the ninth inning where six total runs crossed the board. The Yankees had some, and then Tim uh, Tim Anderson obviously walked it off with the big blast against Britain. The big question was why would you go to Britain and not Lasagna? I think we crashed there. I don't know if that was thunder or something outside my fucking house, but scared the shit out of me and we crashed at the same time. But, um, no, you had, you know, you had the big question mark with why would you go to Britain, the lefty to face a right-handed heavy lineup instead of going to Lasagna, a righty to face a right-handed heavy lineup when they're both ground ball oriented, but decision made. Britain doesn't have it, and that was that. So, you know, again, that was the first game of the series. Uh, we discussed that in episode 273, so go check out that recap really quick if you haven't yet. Um, let's let's let's, uh, let's have to break. When we get back from break, we'll go over games two and three, and uh, that'll be that. Be right back. You can follow me on Facebook at r.j.carbone. You can follow me on Instagram at Rob J. Carbone. And you can follow me on Twitter at NY Sports Talk RC. And if you want to follow along with the blog that I write, subscribe to It's My Opinion on NY Sports Talk RC. WordPress.com.
talk about another fun one. Uh, you know, game two was, was uh, all three of these games, roller coaster shit. But game two, you had the win. Seven to five, the Yankees ended up pulling away. Jameis and Tyone on the mound against Cease. Uh, top of the first, DJ LeMayu doubles five pitches in off of Cease. Then you've got the guardy fly out, pushing him to third. And then Judge up next gets the sack fly to bring him home. So some nice manufacturing there by the Yankee offense, sacrificing facing outs for advancing base runners, and it works. Uh, then Gallo, homers on the changeup, the next at bat. Cease hangs a changeup. Gallo takes that deep for one of two bombs on the game. And then the Yanks are up 2-0 after one. Uh, but the bottom of the first comes. Tyon kind of banged around a bit. Gives up a couple of hits. Um, one of them in a Brayu double. Then he lets up a, a run on a ground ball out. Sox cut it to 2-1. to one. It's kind of back and forth for a bit. Bottom of the second comes. Tyone goes high heat to the number 7 hitter. But this time he gets taken deep. It's a 2-2 to two tie. Then the Yankees answer back. Top of the third comes. Got two outs in the inning. Brett Gardner a triple to deep right. Judge very next at bat. He doubles to deep right. It's 3-2. to two. The Yankees are up one. Sox answer back again in the bottom of the third with an infield single, a double, and then a sack fly against Tyone. That's 3-3. Three to three. Both pitchers then kind of find it. You get a scoreless game for the next four innings. Both Dylan Cease and Jameis and Tyone go five runs. I'm sorry. Go five innings, uh, three runs on their line. Top of the eighth, though. So four innings later... Um, top of the eighth, Judge takes Kimbrell deep on a second pitch hanger. Makes it four to three Yankees. Then the adventure begins, right? First off, I think it needs to be Johnny Lasagna from here on out. Not Zach Britton. Not Chad Green, who I've never been the biggest fan of. Um, but Green gets the ball in the ninth. The Yanks are ahead one run. In the bottom of the ninth, Green gets the ball. He serves up a hanging curveball to the reigning MVP, Jose Abreu. Which is weird. I, I feel like I forgot about it. I feel like a lot of people forget that he won the MVP because last season was such a... It's such like a... Something nobody remembers now because it was like the fake forgotten season. But nonetheless, Abreu shoots this to left center for the game-tying homer 4-4 four to four game. The Yanks then... Put runs on the board. They score in the top of the 10th. You know, with the base runner on second. Judge gets the single. Then you've got Gallo with the home run. It's 7-4 to four after 10. But that's where Boone goes to Zach Britton in the bottom of the 10th. Gets the deep fly out to right field. Britton does. But that advances that ghost runner, they call it, to third base. Then he walks Goodwin on four pitches for first and third. Then he hangs the first pitch sinker to Luis Robert. Allows a base hit to center field to score one run. Then he walks another batter on four pitches again. This loads the bases with one out. And a two-run deficit. He's now pulled. That's what my dad texts me. My father goes, Britain sucks. Green sucks. Our relievers suck. Just, you know, typical disgruntled boomer, boomer Yankees fanship. But but they end up getting uh, getting lucky here. Abreu comes in. He clutches up, gets the number nine hitter. Then he gets Tim Anderson, which, of course, it's Tim Anderson representing the last hope. Uh, but he gets him to bang into a 5-4 fielder's choice. And the Yankees win. But after the game, uh, I think I read that Britain asked Aaron Boone to remove him from the closer role. Uh, thankfully, he asked, and it was granted. Today, he did not close. Um, but this game, you had the Yankee offense at least clicking seven runs on 10 hits, three walks, 13 Ks, um, a double play hit into two for six with a front of the scoring position, seven left on base, and one stolen base. You had two hit performances from DJ LeMayu, from Joey Gallo. Gallo had a three RBI game with two home runs. That was nice to see. A three hit game by Judge, who had four ribbies. Um, you know, Yanks had some chances late. 
in the seventh. I know they had first and second, two out. Couldn't get runs on the board. Cardi goes down swinging. In the eighth, Stanton, he's on first. Foyt bangs into a double play. I think in the ninth, it was it was a Kyle Higashioka who drew drew a walk with one out. Then the Mayhew doubles with two outs, but Guardy grounds out. The Yankees don't get much there at all. They get nothing there. Um, but uh, again, you did score seven runs. So in the end, the offense was good. Tyone did kind of regress, but he was still quality. Five innings, seven hits, a home run, three runs, four Ks. One walk, 93 pitches, 59 were strikes, 63% strikes. And he got the no decision. But, you know, even for an outing that wasn't as good as he's been lately, it was still quality given where he was earlier. If he was off earlier in the season, it's not quality. It's absolutely dreadful to watch. But if you're going to tell me this is a down outing for Tyone right now, I'll take it. You know, he's been pitching really good for the Yankees for a good part of the season now. You know, made a little bit of a mechanics tweak, um, and that's helped him with his command. You know, his glove side location is better, going in in on the lefties, away on the righties. So there's more control there, more command, and he's still throwing that high heat successfully. Um, that was that was the second game of the set. Now, as we get to today's game this afternoon, the 2 p.m. Eastern Time game, the Yankees defeated the White Sox three. Oh no, it was. Not uh, three to one. See, I have three to one on the thing because I was about to. Because when I was taking notes, it was three to one. I didn't expect there to be another barrage of runs in the ninth, but it ends up being five to three. The Yankees win. Um, yet Cortez going up against Giolito. So an impressive job here by the Yanks. Um, they did well on Giolito, man. Patient attack on him. The first ten batters the Yankees sent to the plate took the first pitch. So. It was impressive there. Uh, but Cortez on the flip side, he goes the longest he's ever gone. Towing up against Giolito. Not only matching him, but doing better than him. He goes six brilliant innings. Um, so you got to give him credit. But top of the second comes. We get to Giolito. Voight singles. Odor gets the home run to right field. It's 2 nothing Yankees. Then Giolito records a couple of strikeouts. But then here's DJ LeMahieu staying hot. Records a single. Guardy plates him with a double. So you got 3 nothing, And then for a while, that was it. Until you got to the top of the ninth. We got some insurance. Voight, the two-run home run off of Foster, gave the Yankees some breathing room, which ends up being huge, being crucial. A big, big home run there to put it 5-1 to one because, as we know, it would get interesting after that, you know. Um, <laughs> where do you even start with this shit? Because it's it's... So you got Ridings and Lasagna who do the job. They do the job, but the merry-go-round starts in that ninth inning once again. Litke doesn't have it. Peralta allows a run. And it's a two-run game with men on base. But in the end, they do finish it off with the ground ball double play. Peralta gets a ground ball of the middle. The Yankees, you know, the play's reviewed, but the Yankees, uh, it, it stands still and the Yankees win. I would like to win in a non-thrilling fashion for a change. That'd be great. That, that'd that be fantastic. But this is the way the season is going, man. We're going to have to earn everything. Now, there were some question marks for me. You know, Being the only elite reliever they really have, why can't we go Lasagna two innings? You know, does that hurt? I know, you know Litke, Litke has been a rock. You know, I'll give him that. He's been consistent. He's been healthy all year. He's been pitching quality for them. But he's going to be gassed by September. I mean, we asked this guy to do so much. And when I say so much, I don't just mean the amount he pitches. But he's used in so many different roles, right? We've had to open games with him. Now we're asking to close games. He's got his usual middle to late relief role. I mean, he's got to do a lot for this team. And so you hope that... It can't just be, you hope that it can be more than Lasagna and Licky and other guys start finding it. But right now we've got Chapman out. Britain is not doing the job. Green's hitting a 
rough patch. Litke's even hitting the rough patch, so we'll see. We will see. But, um, again, the Yankee Bats did a nice job in this one, too. Five runs, nine hits, eight walks. They did strike out 16 times, and they were one for 15 in scoring position. 14 left on base. So, I mean, there was a bunch of, there were a bunch of wasted opportunities here. You had, let's see, the two walks in the first inning got nothing. Gallo bunts for a base hit in the third. Voigt singles in the third. Nothing. We put two more on in the fourth. Nothing. We get the leadoff walk by Stanton. Wasted in the fifth. Got nothing. Um, Judge, the two out walk. Then he's still second base. Love how we're still on bases with everybody now. Gallo goes down swinging in that sixth inning. Nothing. Then Stanton, another leadoff walk. Wasted in the seventh. So nothing. DJ walks. Judge gets intentionally walked in the eighth. We get nothing. And then finally, the Voight two-run shot in the ninth. We finally get something. But yeah, it was rough. It was rough seeing all these wasted opportunities. But Voight has got three hits in this one. Odor had a couple of hits. Both of them had two RBIs apiece with the homers. And um, a win's a win, right? It's going to be tight. But at least we're getting wins and... Hey, man, Cortez continues to mow down lineups. And I, like I said, you got to keep this guy out there. You can't sit him for someone like Heaney once everybody is healthy. Um, he's doing his thing. He's got a tight fastball. The The different deliveries, obviously, is, is a big part of his approach. And it's been working. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if he's a long-term guy because, you know, history says on his resume, if you look at him over the years, there's always a big regression period. So you have to think, is correction coming? But... Again, this is this is not. I don't like the analytical approach. I want to keep going. I'm all for hot. Go with the hot hand. Keep going with the guy who's hot, and then when he when he falters, then you make a decision. Right now, he's hot. He's doing his thing. And this was against a solid White Sox offense. Chicago, they may not hit a ton of home runs. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they are. I was looking at their stats mid game, so it might be a little different now. But they're eighth in OPS. 7th in batting average, 7th in runs scored, and 7th in walks. So they're top 10 in a bunch of categories. Um, and yet Cortez is out here going 6 innings, 7 hits, 1 home run, a run, a walk, 7 Ks, and he lowers his ERA to 255. <laughs> and that's in 14, star 14 starts or performances. 14 outings. It's just that solo bomb in the 6th. That was it. He was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, man, you, you you talk about pitching, but the bats had a solid series when you look at it all together, right? <clears throat> this is a good pitching staff that Chicago has. Their pen is good and their rotation is good, especially. Uh, but we scored 20 runs in three games on them, so that's almost seven runs a game. You know, Chicago's top five in ERA overall, third in, in starter ERA, 16 in reliever ERA, but they have guys like Hendricks. Michael Kopech, they've got Kimbrell, obviously. They've got some good arms, but we did a nice job against them this series. Um, and we've got Garrett Cole on the mound tomorrow. Hopefully he can go deep and save us, you know, some arms here because we are taxed. We've got a game tomorrow. Then we've got the doubleheader against Boston. We, we have a week straight where we're not getting an off day. And so we're doubling up on Tuesday. So we'll see. But um, let's head to break. And we'll try and wrap this thing up when we get back. Stay with us.
Yeah, man. So uh, a good series for the Yankees. I don't know if I have anything else. Again, I'm, I'm got a lot of shit to do. So I apologize if these are short, but these are boring episodes. I, I know that, but not like anybody tunes in. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, let's get to the MYY, MYK question of the day. We'll just wrap it up from here. Right? Make, it makes sense to just put a bow on this one. So episode 273 um our myy myk question of the day i asked you all who played shoeless joe jackson in the movie field of dreams and the answer to that question ray liotta pretty easy if you've seen the movie um this episode 274 our nyy nyk question of the day which yankee was the first reliever to win the American League Cy Young. All right. So let me know which Yankee was the first reliever to win the American League Cy Young. Let me know the answer on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Um, once I publish the promo to this podcast, just comment the answer or just send me a DM. I don't use Twitter really, so just send me a um, send me the answer on one of the other platforms. But yeah, you can follow me on social on any of those three. You can follow the podcast and the blog. Follow along and subscribe to them. All that information is on my link tree. Linktr.ee forward slash RJ Carbone. Again, I'm your host, RJ. This is episode 274 of BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. Gonna go work on my assignments. I'll put this up tonight. Or as soon as I can. It might be earlier. Um, it is it is 7 p.m. So, later than I thought. Sunday, August 15th. As I am recording and as you are listening, it's probably that same night. So, thank you for tuning in. And um, we'll see you after this Boston series. Alright? Thanks, guys. Ciao. This episode is brought to you by Anchor, podcasting made easy.